Hello, it is Thursday, October 19th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solved. It's a Thursday crossword today. I just realized it's Thursday. <laughs> that means we have an interesting or intricate theme, which I always have to admit, I, I really do enjoy. Um, let's see what we've got in store for us today. And this mysterious edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Laura Sexton, Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are, of course, sustaining this channel, bringing us this series. I'm very grateful to them for that. So thank you for their support, for yours if you're a patron, and for the support of everybody who supports this channel through the Patreon campaign. If you'd like to do so, you can head over to patreon.com slash dailysolve, or click the link in the description field, and there you can find the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as, of course, the official mug for benefactors. So do check it out. Um, Thanks, of course, also to all the subscribers of the YouTube channel. It does help, and it's a nice, free, simple thing you can do to stay abreast of these videos and give the channel a little bit of a lift, so thanks. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a nice, friendly chat community you can join via a description field link. So uh, look over there as well. All right, let's get on to the puzzle. This is oh, the fourth, maybe, puzzle by Colin Ernst, and... Um, it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It's a Thursday crossword, so of course it has a theme of interest. It'll have something uh, intriguing going on, I suspect. And let's start solving and find out what that is. Um, blank, no good. Up to no good is the first thing that comes to mind that doesn't fit. Um, say no good. Uh, not really sure. Shelf mate of Chips Ahoy and Oreo. Uh I don't know. I mean, it'll obviously be some sort of packaged cookie treat, but I yeah, I don't know. Actor Abe. Abe Vigoda? It's the only actor Abe I can think of. Give quite a shock. Zap? Could be. I, don't, I would almost expect that to have a question mark at the end to indicate that it's a literal shock rather than sort of surprising somebody. But I don't know. Let's keep look, looking. Bolt at great speed. Okay, this is the first thing I feel confident in putting in the grid. Usain Bolt is obviously a very famous, very famous runner. So he, he runs at great speed. Um, cellular centers. Nuclei. Um, centers of the nucleus of the in a, in a cell. So I think that's what's going on there. Tropical resort locale, maybe. Um, uh, I assume this will be, well, I was going to say the name of a country. It might not be. It might be a particular island or something. Oh, what is this? Necco wafers, maybe, or something? Praise. Laud. Oh, Nilla, Nilla wafers, could be. What about... What about this? Risky thing to do in an affidavit. Well, you wouldn't want to lie in an affidavit. That would be ill-advised. And what happened next? And you could say, in fact, I even said that it's sort of just instinctively uh, when reading the clue. Knowledgeable within. So if you're clued in, you're knowledgeable. Oh, okay. So a tropical resort locale, it, it, it's not the name of an island. It is simply an isle in, in general terms, generically. So did some metalworking on uh, tooled or um, did some metal working on. What would this be? Oh, can't I, I can't think offhand. Tent with smoke flaps in an anglicized spelling. I assume that will mean there's an S rather than a Z in this. Um, tent with smoke flaps. What's a tent with smoke flaps? Oh, it probably doesn't mean anglicized in the sense of, of sort of British English spelling. It probably just means it's a foreign language word and it's been transliterated into English. Um, a TP? Uh, that could be it. Let's look at this. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that, that, that suggests this might be right because Aer Lingus is a, um, an Irish, major Irish airline and that fits. So what about this one? Column style, Doric columns or Doric 
columns, uh, ionic columns, and so on uh, from the classical world. And then if one was visibly embarrassed, one read something red or went, let's see, was visibly embarrassed, blushed or red. I keep wanting this to be reddened, but that doesn't work. Um, was visibly embarrassed. Oh, I just feel like I should be able to see this. Something red, went red, turned turned red. There we go. I think that, that may well be correct. Oh, oh, annealed. Did some metal, metal working on. Annealed, right? A-N-N-E-A-L-E-D? I wonder if there's something where we're sort of missing the first letter. It's a Thursday crossword, so there's, there could always be something going on. Because if this were up to no good and we're missing the U, and this were annealed and we're missing the A, I guess TP can be spelled this way as well. I've seen it both ways. You see it sometimes with a single E. I think that actually might be more common in... British English, to be honest, but um, but often spelled this way as well. Um, make oh 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 sorry I I should have looked at this when I was thinking about this first column here it makes things more interesting because this is in italics, which means it's part of the theme. Um, that's what italicized clues usually mean. They usually mean uh, this is related to the theme in some way. It's not going to be explained. Uh, we're just marking the clues in italics so that you can. Uh, associate them with one another and figure out what's going on. So, okay, let's see. Give quite a shock. So if this were four letters, let's see, what would this be? Uh, I, know, I, can't, I can't think of anything, actually. Group in a roundup. Oh, now I'm running out of steam entirely on this little... I keep wanting this to be penne. It just looks like the pasta penne to me. Makes things more interesting. Oh, I, I don't know. Although, sorry, I just had another thought. If you make things more interesting, you sort of up the stakes, makes them, could it be ups something? Because that would allow us, if we use the rebus function, so the rebus is a method by which you can put more than one letter in a cell, in a, in a crossword. So if we enable that and we put up here, that would allow this to be up to no good, which is the full answer that I suspect this is. I was thinking maybe it's cut off in some way, but I don't, but it could be up. So, okay, right. So let's do it for the rest. So this would be annealed. This would be T-E. Up. Oh, ups. It is. It is. Ups the ante. Oh, okay. That's exactly it. So ups the, no, wait, no, wait. Oh, no, sorry, I did that, that, entered this incorrectly, sorry. Oops, the ante. There we go, there we go. Oh, to stun, to give quite a shock is to stun somebody. And then a group in a roundup is a herd. You could be, yes, you could be rounding up cattle or something in a herd. And then annealed and TB. Okay, great, so that's what this is. Ups the ante, very good, okay. <laughs> Took a while to understand exactly what was going on in this corner, but we've done it. And that may well be happening elsewhere. I mean, here, no, not here, actually. Because anywhere this is happening, now that we know it's happening, uh, we can be very clear about it. We, there's no ambiguity because it will have to be part of an italicized vertical answer. Or, or I guess we could have one. I could, in theory, I suppose we could have one going horizontally and getting the downs, but I suspect they'll all be vertical. Um, here, maybe? No. Here? Maybe they're not all the edges. Maybe they're... Oh, here's one as well. Gamble boldly in a way. Oh, there is a revealer or a hint to the answers in this puzzle's italicized clues. That's interesting. Very frequently when you have italicized clues, you don't have a revealer. And then instead, what would happen is very frequently you'll have the revealer such as we do here, which explains or gives a hint to something about the theme. And then they'll be starred. They'll have an asterisk instead. I don't know why. It's just often how it is. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's a... It's a academic point. But anyway, I guess they're not all at the edges. I thought maybe they'd be at the perimeter, but nope. Sorry, I'm just blathering. Let's solve the puzzle. <laughs>
taken into account. If something's taken into account, oh, funds, money taken into one's bank account, it would be on deposit at that financial institution. So there we have it. Uh, Mrs. Claus, the spouse of Santa Claus, internal review for short would be um, internal review. Oh, an MRI, maybe? Um, magnetic resonance imagery, so a literal review of your internals, the, the in, inside of your body. That could be, that well could be the case. Senate Majority Leader during most of Obama's presidency, that's uh, Harry Reid. It's another, it's a, well, I shouldn't say another, that's a U.S. politics clue. And then territory divided into two states abbreviation. That's Dakota, the Dakota Territory, divided into present day North Dakota and South Dakota, which are states in the U.S., and then one hanging around a kennel would be an ID tag on a dog, for instance. Top floor spaces are, uh, I was going to say gantries. That's not the word I'm looking for, is it? What is the word? Garricks. No. I was thinking of a kind of attic space, but I guess that's not, I guess top floor doesn't necessarily mean attic. An attic could be above the top floor. So what would this be? Um... Yeah, I'm not sure I've had. What about this? Egyptian temple site. Oh, um, uh, Karnak? Oh, that means one of these is going to have to be italics. Yes, here it is. Make things, make things more interesting. So, well, sorry, that's not, it's not the make things more interesting part that's relevant. It's the italicized part. So, uh, Karnak is indeed correct. And uh, I was fortunate to have that K because that that gave me that one. Um, but it means we'll have an AK here. So to make things more interesting is to up the stakes. There we go. Oh, right. So I think, are these all going to start with up? Darby's, e.g. Maybe it's raise the stakes. Well, let's, let's work backwards. So if I put if I put in stakes first, and then the will have to go in as well. Uh, raise the stakes would work. Up the stakes wouldn't. So let's try raise the stakes. Um, Darby's. Races. There we go. There we go. And hasn't been hoodwinked by. Is on to. Right. If, okay. if, if she hasn't been hood, hoodwinked by you, she's on to you. Uh, there we go. Food regimens are diets. Okay, so these, so these certainly aren't relevant. They're not specifically related, related to the perimeters. But it looks like they're, these at least are symmetrically disposed in the sense that they're located in sort of positionally equivalent spaces in the grid. If we rotated the puzzle 180 degrees, these would be in the same positions relative to one another. Um, does that mean we have some also? Oh, yeah, here's one, which means we'll have one here, which we do. Yes. Okay. So at, as we would expect with most well-constructed themes, they are kind of symmetrically placed within the grid. Is this CDs? Yes. Round items and square cases are CDs. In fact, I have quite a few of those behind me in a case. This can be seen just in the corner. Pyramid scheme, a pyramid scheme, there we go, is a, um, you know, a kind of uh, financial kind of edifice that you can uh, tower Mormon people onto until it uh, until it collapses, and the people at the bottom take the brunt of it. Or I guess it's the people at the sort of very top, the the newest and the newest kind of entrance to the pyramid scheme. I suppose are the ones who suffer. Uh, sorry, my schedule's packed. I can't. Hearst Mag. Cosmopolitan, Cosmo. Sorry, I'm still thinking about this pyramid scheme thing. I'm trying to think. So the, in a pyramid scheme, the person who starts it would be at the sort of point. So I guess, the, I guess the illustration of a pyramid scheme, strangely, is that it sort of starts at the point of a single person and then spreads out below, involving more and more and more and more people. So it's sort of like a pyramid that grows from the top down. That's not really what the metaphor suggests, but I'm trying to think mechanically how it would work. I guess you could think of it as an upside-down pyramid that starts with a single person 
at the tip of the upside down pyramid on the ground and then it grows up from that and becomes more and more top heavy and unstable. I suppose that's effectively what's happening in the pyramid scheme because it, 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 you know, as the network grows, more and more people join and it becomes wider. Okay. Anyway, how English poets wrote previously. Well, um, previously could be heirs and before in a poetic sense. So I think that's what that's getting at. And here we have Astor. Yes. Britain's historic lady Astor, um, who was an MP. If I'm thinking of the, the correct lady Astor, a, um, became an MP. Um, was Lady Astor the first British female MP or the first woman British MP to take a seat in the House of Commons? I believe there may have earlier been a woman elected MP who was, who was not able to actually take her seat in the House of Commons. But Lady Astor might have been the first to actually sit in the House of Commons. She was actually an American who, who married a Brit, I believe. Um, I'll have to look that up. Okay, anyway. Um, bother could be to... I'm not sure. 100 years. Uh, oh, a century, because it's abbreviated. So years is abbreviated here, therefore so will be the answer which is century abbreviated to CEM. Okay. French automaker um, uh, Citroën. I'm probably pronouncing that quite terribly. Let's see. Oh, but one of these will be, yes, here. So we'll put the R-O in there. And then there we go. That is a French automaker, a French um, automake. And then musicians that play with mallets. Um, xylophonists, glockenspiel players. Um, uh, why can I not think with symbolists? Uh, I feel ridiculous that I can't just think of what the, who this would be. I mean, it'll end with an S musicians that play with mallets. Who else plays with what other instruments use mallets, xylophone, marimba, glockenspiel, um, Symbols, uh, I don't know, a bass drum, uh, mallets specifically. I'm, I'm incensed that I can't, I can't believe, I can't think of what this would be in three letters remaining. I don't know. Actor, oh right, well now I can do actor Abe Vigoda because we understand what's going on in the grid. There we go. So it is indeed that. And here we have risk it all, go for broke. Yep. There we go. Okay, great. This is a, this is a fun theme. Um, musicians that play with mallets, vibraphonists. Are they called vibists? I don't, surely not. Vibists. I, I apologize. This has got to be incredibly, I must be missing something obvious. Is it vibists? I've never heard that word before. I would have just said vibraphonists. We play the vibraphone, which is a sort of, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a marimba or something, but it's, uh, it's got a, um, it's an, it's an electrified instrument and it creates this great kind of tremolo effect. It's really, it's a very distinctive instrument. You'd recognize it if you heard it, if you don't know what it is, uh, notif to notify someone is to inform them. God, it, it must be this. A uh, hit film whose narrator humorously remarks, thanks to her, all problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. Oh, Barbie. There we go. Okay. That was fairly obvious, actually, in retrospect. And then here we have In at the Kill. I don't... Do I know that phrase? I don't think I do. In at the Kill. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like it could be a phrase. It's not one I know, but but I, I'm 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 sure the crosses are the crosses. I'm quite confident in. So I think we'll just move on. And then this is vibists. So, wow, I didn't know that phrase. I, I I assume this is referring to the vibraphone. If not, someone do let me know. Partner of cut, cut and dried. You you could say that's to I mean it's all taken care of. It's wrapped up. 
And then longtime sneakers brand Keds is a brand of shoe is a shoe brand. And then religious agreements could be amen. So, you know, the reason this has a question mark is a bit punny is because we're sort of conflating to, you know, you sort of say, amen, you could agree in a kind of informal sense. And then because it's religiously inflected language, we have religious agreements. And so that's this slightly punny. Flamenco dancers cry. Ole, flamenco dancer might, might cry. Counterfeit coins are, oh, I think I know this phrase, but I can't think what it is. Um, that's annoying. Let me, we'll see if I, we'll see if I recognize or not once it comes in. Space chimp of 1961. Enos, I think, is the chimp who went to space. Let's see if that is true. You might provide the, provide the last four of this in brief. So, uh, certainly if you deal with, you know, the U.S. tax system or various other, you, I suppose, you have medical things or, or anything like that, um, pension situations, you will provide your last four of your social security number fairly, fairly frequently. So that's what, that's what's going on there. SSN, um, opens as some doors on latches. I have no idea if that's actually correct. It happens to fit. So let's check the cross. Oh, slugs are the, that is the counterfeit coins that actually does sound familiar. So let's, uh, I needed some crosses to give me that, but let's try it. Ditch assistance. Is this maybe you're stuck in a ditch and you need a tow truck or something? Broadway's Lynn manuel Miranda. Maybe maybe Slugs is, is wrong after all. Let's see. Ditch assistance. I, I don't know if any... This, these things might be incorrect, but let's keep going and just figure it out. To bother someone is to... Or it could be a bother. And then here we have California or Nuevo York. So... Uh, Uh, this is, this is saying California or New York are states. So in Spanish, we're going to say Estado as in Estado Unidas, Unidas, Estados Unidas. Um, so that, that's that. And this, yes, because it's symmetrical with the, the other one and it's italicized here. And in fact, this is our revealer. So gamble boldly in a way, uh, To gamble boldly, to, or a hint to the answers to this puzzles. Oh, double down, double down. Right. Okay. There we go. It's so satisfying when that comes to you in a moment like that. It took me probably longer than it needed to, but uh, it was still very pleasing to actually spot it. So double down, a very, very appropriate revealer, because of course we are doubling up letters in these cells in, and they're down clues only. So it was relevant that they were only down clues. Okay, let's see. Ditch assistant. I'm not sure. This is this is probably all wrong. I might just delete this for now. Um, although this looks like club, which might be something. Yeah, okay, never mind. Maybe this is right because it has reading assignments would be a book club. So there we go. Golfer's target is a whole uh, prefix with scopy is endoscopy. So there we go. Um, and then like a quilt, a quilt is sewn. You'd sew it. And then ditch assistant. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, ditch assistants. I see. It's not assistance in a ditch, it's to ditch your sort of assistance that's being offered or provided to go it alone. So this was okay. My my original thoughts were, I think, right. So slugs and unlatches I think are appropriate here. And then to bother so ah, if something bothers you, it eats at you. There we have it. Here we have, I would say, I, at this point, I'm going to declare this the official finger wagging, <laughs> finger wagging accompaniment of the New York Times crossword, which is tisk or tsk, tsk, that kind of that kind of sound, um, and uh, that's what it is. So, Greek god of the winds would be uh, Aeolia, I suppose, as in sort of Aeolian winds. Uh, it, this word is. Uh, the root of this word is often used to refer to wind. In fact, I think in French, it might even be the word for sort of windmills, like wind, you know, wind power. Um, uh, so yeah, you can remember it. it if that helps, you, you can remember it that way. At least that's often how I do. Um, apparel competitor of Playtex. 
Um, a power competitor of Playtex. What would be a competitor? What would be another brand? I'm sure, I'm sure I'll recognize it when I see it, but I, I can't think off the top of my head. Um, get tight with is, oh, so this is worth remembering. When you see a parenthetical word like this at the end of a clue, it means you're going to apply that word both to this clue. We can see get tight with somebody, but it means you're also going to apply it to the answer. So in this case, I think the answer is probably bond. Um, so you'll get tight with somebody is the same as to bond with them. We'll apply with to both. Modern day sort of provocateur would be a troll, I suppose, as in an internet troll, for instance. Someone who is, is intentionally um, kind of inflammatory. Special attention in brief is TLC, tender love and care, and what's found in the center of a prune, but question mark. So something sort of punny. A, a you? Oh, am I wrong about Aeolia here? I must be. A oh, is it Aeolus? Okay, okay, okay. Far, fine, that's fair enough. I compl- Yeah, that that sounds better. I was thinking it didn't sound completely right, but I didn't say anything because I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't confident in my thought and I just figured, well, I guess it fits. Anyway, that was wrong. So Aeolus, same idea, but um, same root. But uh, I, I must have been actually thinking of the French windmill thing, which I think is E-O-L, uh, E-O-L-I-A, and maybe. Anyway, I'll have to look it up. But anyway, the reason that I realized that was incorrect was because what's found in the center of a prune is literally a long U, prune, long, a long vowel sound U. And then critter that grows by leaps and bounds is a roux. So there's a punny way to refer to a young kangaroo. Uh, it grows by leaps and bounds, and it's an appropriate metaphor because a kangaroo, of course, jumps around. And then end notes are coda. So this is a musical term referring to the kind of uh, little ending uh, bars of a piece of music, a coda. And then here we have a parallel competitor of Playtex, Olga. I actually don't recognize that, to be honest. So there we have it. I'll have to, I'll have to remember that one for the future, hopefully. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, we have not yet solved all of the double downs. I, I guess I'm on one here. So to risk it all, to go for broke? No, we, I don't know. We already did go for broke. To risk it all, to go all in is not long enough. I don't know. Probably not going to repeat go either because we have that already. I'd be a fool not to. Okay, well, that we can put I'd be right in there. Uh, oh, bet. This would be risk it all. Bet the farm. Let's just try it. Let's just try it and see if it, see if it works out. Uh, it might. It might not. But we'll, we'll give it a shot. Certain volleyball players. Oh, setters. I think, I mean, I... I I basically no experience with volleyball whatsoever, but I believe in volleyball when you you sort of set the ball up for your teammate and then they can they can hit it or or maybe even spike it spike it in there. Um, basketball great Thomas Wright Isaiah Thomas, whose name is spelled this way, but as somebody informed me in a comment, is still pronounced Isaiah, not Isaiah, which is sort of how it looks. But uh, so Isaiah Thomas, yes, a, a, a certainly famous basketball. Uh, player whose name I at least recognize. You who this week, this way, I'm here. Okay, good. Bet the farm is looking like it's working out equally quickly. So if you moved equally quickly to somebody else, you'd move as fast. And then a high-end fashion house, Hermes is a high-end fashion house. And then let's just, oh, oh, it's not I'm here. It's in here. You who this way, in here. Fair enough. That works just as well. Mentally slow could be dense and then uh, language akin to Manx is Erse, right? So um, uh, Gaelic languages, I suppose. Um, and then top floor spaces, um, uh, Manx from the Isle of Man, I believe is what that's referring to there. And then uh, top floor spaces, oh, this is Garrett's. Oh, what did I put? I put Garrick's. Oh, that was that's embarrassing. Sorry about that. I just... Ugh. I don't know what I don't know what exactly I was thinking of there, but um, Garrett's is, is exactly the word I was thinking of, and I just sort of confused myself and put the wrong thing in, and that's why it didn't fit. Um, whoops. Anyway, insurance or tax figures are rates, insurance rates or tax rates, and university staffers 
are RAs, resident assistants. They might live in a dormitory and sort of assist the, uh, I don't know, campus staff, I suppose. And then I think that's it. It is. There we have it. That was a somewhat meandering solve, but we, we got there with a very nice theme. I really enjoyed this theme, I have to say. So uh, double down to gamble boldly in a way. Um, and that is equivalent to make things more interesting, to up, up the ante, makes things more interesting, ups the ante. Uh, to risk it all is to go for broke. To make things more interesting is to raise the stakes. And to risk it all is to bet the farm. And uh, oh, we had risk it all twice. That's that's why I, I that I think there was that was familiar to me, but I I couldn't remember that we actually literally doubled the clue. So there we go. Oh, and and these were I see I see. So these two that's appropriate because the the clues were doubled as well. So it makes things more interesting was itself doubled up almost. Here we had makes here we had make, but you know effectively the clue was doubled up. Uh, doubled down. And then here we had risk it all, which was doubled. And then finally our revealer, which um, explains what was going on. And there we have it. Very nice. Really enjoyed that one. Enjoyed the kind of slow chipping away at the nature of the theme in order to uh, figure out what was going on and break in into this corner and uh, enjoyed solving the rest of the puzzle. A nice, nice range of knowledge, some uh, actually multiple sort of classically tinted clues, I suppose. And there we have it. That was the Thursday crossword. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow with the Friday puzzle, a themeless crossword. So certainly none of this, although having said that, we did have a themed puzzle. What was it? Saturday last week, I think. Um, we probably won't tomorrow. It will probably be a themeless Friday puzzle, but you never know. Uh, join me one way or the other and we'll find out. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.